This week, we're going to have a story in two parts. Part one this week, part next, part two next week. And it's from a, a, a book by Pamela Butchart called To We or Not To We. Now, you'll be laughing at that anyway, but you might be also be thinking, I've heard something similar to that. Have you heard of the quote, to be or not to be? Well, that is straight out of a Shakespearean play. And this book has four retellings of four of Shakespeare's plays, um, tragedies, comedies. We're going to hear a tragedy and it is the tragedy of Hamlet. And it's retold by Pamela Butchart in a, in a modern day way and uh, makes it funny as well. She adds some bits that weren't in the original Shakespeare. I wonder whether you'll be able to spot which ones they, which bits they are. Anyway, in Hamlet, uh, we have a number of characters. We have Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, Gertrude, who's Hamlet's mum, Queen of Denmark, Claudius, Hamlet's uncle, the dead king's brother, Horatio, Hamlet's best friend, the ghost, Hamlet's dad, who was once king of Denmark, Ophelia, Hamlet's girlfriend, the actors who perform Hamlet's play, Polonius, who's Ophelia's dad and Claudius' best friend, the grave diggers, Yorick, who was once the court jester and, and now a skull, Laertes, Polonius' son and Ophelia's brother, and Fortinbras, the prince of Norway. Now you'll hear more and learn more about those characters as the play or as the story progresses. Uh, but I hope you're going to enjoy part one of Hamlet. Hamlet part one. One time when we were playing Monopoly at Maisie's house, we couldn't even get started because Zack could not decide if he wanted to be the hat or the car. And he kept saying stuff like, but I like both, what should I do? And what if I pick the car and then I lose? And what if Jodie gets the car and she wins? Then Maisie's mum came in and asked us if we'd like pepperoni on our pizza. And I said yes. And so did Maisie and Jodie. But Zach said he wasn't sure. And then he put his head in his hands because he couldn't decide about the car or the hat or the pepperoni. And it was stressing him out. So that's when I told Zach that he was being exactly like Hamlet out of the Shakespeare play. And Zach said that he wasn't. And Maisie's mum burst out laughing and said that he was actually. Then Zach said he was definitely wasn't. So I asked Zach if he knew who Hamlet was and he said he didn't. So that's when I told Zach that Hamlet was the Prince of Denmark who had been at university for about 20 years because he couldn't decide what to be when he grew up so he just kept going back to college and doing loads of stuff like history and biology and hairdressing. But one day when Hamlet came home to get his mum to do his washing for him he found out that his dad, the King of Denmark, had died. And then his mum told him that she was going on a date with his uncle Claudius and that there was some leftover lasagna in the fridge. Hamlet was furious because his mum didn't seem bothered that his dad had died and also because she was going on a date with his uncle, which was totally weird, even though she was pretending that it wasn't. Hamlet's mum and uncle Claudius got back from their date just in time for the king's funeral. And as soon as the funeral finished, Claudius went down on one knee and proposed to Hamlet's mum. Then he told all the funeral guests just to stay sitting down because they were about to get married and he was going to be king of Denmark. Hamlet was totally shocked because his uncle was about to become his stepdad and also because he was supposed to become the king of Denmark. And he probably should have grabbed the minister's microphone, the minister's microphone and shouted, Mum, you can't marry Dad's brother. That's disgusting. And also, I'm the king now. But Hamlet didn't shout any of these things. He just sat there trying to decide what to do to stop the wedding until the minister said, I now pronounce you husband and wife. And it was too late. After the funeral wedding, Hamlet went up to the castle roof and moaned for hours to his best friend Horatio who was very good at listening, which was a good thing because Hamlet talked a lot. Hamlet kept asking Horatio loads of questions like, what do you think I should do about the king thing? And should I get the castle locks changed so Claudius can't move in? And should I become a hairdresser? But Hor Horatio never got a chance to answer any of these questions because as soon as Hamlet asked a question, he always asked another one right away, which was very annoying. But then all of a sudden, a ghostly voice said, You've been eating my lasagna. I can smell it on your breath. 
and Hamlet gasped because he knew it was his ghost dad before he even turned around because lasagna was his dad's most favourite thing. Once the ghost stopped going on and on about never being able to eat lasagna ever again, he said, Hamlet, I am here to tell you that I was murdered by my own brother. And then the ghost told Hamlet that Claudius had crept up on him when he was sleeping in the garden and poured poison in his ear and that his ear was still a bit sore and itchy, even though he was dead. And then he said, I need you to do two very important things for me and you must do them because I am your ghost dad. That's when he told Hamlet that he must avenge his death which meant he wanted him to kill his uncle. And also that he was to bring him some lasagna so he could smell it and try to lick the air. And then he disappeared. What are you going to do? said Horatio. But Hamlet said he didn't know and that he needed a drink of juice first. Then when he'd had his juice, Horatio said, but what are you going to do, Hamlet? But Hamlet said he wasn't sure, and he needed, he needed to finish his jigsaw first, even though he probably shouldn't have started a jigsaw when he was in the middle of trying to decide if he was going to avenge his ghost dad's death. So Horatio waited until Hamlet finished his jigsaw and then asked him again. But Hamlet spotted a pigeon and said he needed to, to draw a picture at first before he decided what to do. So Horatio just stopped asking him because he was obviously avoiding the question and had no idea what he was going to do because he was a bit of a nightmare like that. Hamlet could never make his mind up about anything. And one time he actually went to school in just his pants and got sent home because he couldn't decide what to wear. Hamlet said he needed to be sure the ghost was telling the truth before he did the avenging and that he was going to spy on his uncle to see if he was acting all guilty and suspicious like a brother murderer would. So Hamlet decided to pretend he was in a terrible mood and be mean to everyone, even his girlfriend Ophelia, so that they would be so shocked by his bad behaviour that he wouldn't know they wouldn't notice the spying. Hamlet coughed on all the scrambled eggs at breakfast, left all the royal toilet seats up and made up a song about Claudius's best friend Polonius looking like an evil guinea pig and sang it to him, even though Polonius was Ophelia's dad, so that was a bit of a bad idea. Everyone was talking about how rude Hamlet was now and when anyone caught him, caught him spying on his uncle, he would just call him the worst name he could think of and they'd forget all about the spying. And when poor Ophelia asked Hamlet if he still wanted to marry her, Hamlet said that he definitely didn't and that she should probably just go away and become a nun. And that made Ophelia run away crying because she loved Hamlet and also because she'd already bought her wedding dress and it was non-refundable. That's when Hamlet realised that he didn't have to pretend to be in a terrible mood anymore because he really was in a terrible mood because he kept thinking about murder and avenging all the time and he couldn't make up his mind about Claudius. But one day Hamlet got an idea while he was watching the royal actors rehearse. Watching the royal actors rehearse was one of his and Horatio's favourite things to do because the actors were terrible and always forgot their lines so it was a good laugh. And sometimes their wigs slipped down their faces while they were talking and they just had to leave them there because it was a dress rehearsal, which means you can't stop even if your wig is covering your face and no one can hear what you're saying. So anyway, Hamlet's idea was to write a new play about a man who kills a king by pouring poison in his ear while he's sleeping and to make the actors do that one to see if Claudius would freak out when he saw it. But the actors didn't want to do it because there were loads of spelling mistakes in the script because Hamlet had had to write it really quickly. So Hamlet showed the actors a bag of gold and a voucher he got for his birthday for an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and the actors said they'd do it. Hamlet stared at Claudius while he watched the play, which was pretty hard to do because Claudius kept making kissy sounds at Hamlet's mum and pinching her cheeks, which made Hamlet feel violently sick. But then Claudius stopped making kissy sounds and leaned forward in his seat as he watched one of the actors pour poison into the sleeping king's ear. Claudius went white as a sheet and shouted, This is the worst play I have ever seen! And then he ran away.
That's when Hamlet knew that the ghost w was Ghost Dad and that it had been telling the truth about the brother murderer. End of part one. Part two next week. Now, I have a few questions for you. Pause them after each one and have a chat just to see what you think. First question, what was Zach not able to do that made Maisie think it was just like the Shakespearean play Hamlet? What sad news did Hamlet find out when he went home? What was his man planning to do that shocked Hamlet? Hamlet's dad comes back as a ghost. What does he tell Hamlet? How did the, how did the, the King of Denmark die? What was done to him? What did Hamlet's father's ghost tell Hamlet to do? What do you think this means? Hamlet delays avenging his father's death. Why? Meanwhile, Ophelia, Hamlet's girlfriend, asks if he still wants to marry her. What does Hamlet say and what does he tell her to do? What happens during the play that makes Hamlet realise Claudius did kill his father? What funny bits has Pamela Butchart added that you think may have not been, have been in the original Shakespearean play? Can you explain why you think that? I hope you've enjoyed the first part and we'll have part two of Hamlet by William Shakespeare retold in a style, in a different style by Pamela Butchart next week.